You're listening to Packers Talk Network. PackersTalk.com Do you want to experience the thrill of a Packers game at Lambeau Field? If so, be sure to get your game tickets from the longtime trusted source in Wisconsin, Ticket King. Visit their locations in Milwaukee and Green Bay. Just go to their website, theticketking.com. Again, that's theticketking.com. Great. Good evening, (laughs) Packer Nation. Welcome back to another edition of Pack to the Future podcast. I am your host, John Jameson. We are about to bring the heat tonight for all of you guys. We had some we had some deep ball action. Sealed the deal. Game time in the bag. Packers beat the Bears. And guys, I'm super thrilled about it. Are you guys super thrilled about it? Uh, yes, I you am are. super thrilled. <laughs> I am super thrilled. <laughs> that was a warm up, guys. Great, great, great job. <laughs> That was a really long warm up. That was a really long warm up. How did it sound? Oh my goodness! Did it sound I thought, good? I thought I thought we were going. I thought we were going for real. No, that was the, that was the warm up. The warm up that I do every week. Okay, <laughs> you it don't from- do that every week. I was actually just the whole time I was staring at Jordan's face because he went from like laughing to thinking that was fake, and the longer you went, his <laughs> face just got steadily more serious. Where he's like, "This is he's actually doing this." Check New York Bozo! New York Bozo! New York Bozo! I gotta get my biceps a little bigger. Yeah, you can always work on that. Oh, I could sure use a hot dog with chili. You know what time the game starts? Hey, you got any left-handed footballs? We need to fire him. Is anybody else tired or is it just me? Good thing I'm going to show you. You got any eligibility left? I got some advice for y'all. Take two weeks off, then quit. Good evening, Packer Nation. Welcome back to another edition of Pack to the Future podcast. I am your host, John Jameson. It is always, always great to bring you the best Packers coverage around. Um, we just saw another beautiful effort. I will call it a beautiful effort. Um, I know that there's some, I know there's some uh, talk going on about you know it was an ugly win stuff like that. But you know what? We played we played the Bears, their rival, and boy, is it sweet to tie up the series and get things going, Jordy. Jordy Nelson with a huge catch at the end. We got the deep ball going. So a lot of things, a lot of things to be hopeful for. And, you know, the Packers keep up, keep up on their winning ways. And, you know, you know, anything can happen. This is a national, national, national football league, guys. So, um, Brian, how do you feel? How do you feel about the game? Oh, man. A lot better after your intro to our show here. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you so Um, much. to all of our listeners out there, if you have the chance to talk to Aaron Rodgers at any point in your lives, make the first question be something to the effect of, what are tomorrow's lottery numbers? Because after <laughs> R-E-L-A-X in 2014, and we're going to run the table in 2016, like, this man is psychic. So, <laughs> should you see him in a restaurant, get lottery numbers from him. I, 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 that, will, that will be my first question I ask him. Um, after the, after, after my first question that, um, I've always wanted to ask him is that like, can I kiss you? But, uh, <laughs> come on, oh can't, can't, can't blame me. You can't blame me. Um, Dusty. I, I kind of can. Yes. You don't, don't blame me. Don't blame I'm me. I'm not. I'm uh, not. Dusty, how are, how are you doing? I'm, I'm doing good, man. You know, man, to just, uh, you know, Packers win, but on even, uh, but yeah, they, they got the win. Got the Lions lost. They're on track to make the playoffs. They win these next two. I went to go see Rogue One. Uh, man, it's uh, life's real good. Man, everything's looking real, real nice. That is. A, I want to see. Was Rogue One worth? Oh seeing? man. Oh, so good. So 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 good. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I saw I saw the Force Awakens along with everyone else in America. Um, and I tell you what, I was I was moved. I was moved, and I'm hoping that Rogue One can move me. Move me the Rogue same one, way. Rogue so, One got me, man. There's there's a couple moments. Rogue <laughs> One just really pulled at my heartstrings. Had a couple couple little tears just 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 trying to come out of my eye. I'm not. Mm, I don't. I don't uh, cry because I'm a I'm a man. You understand? I'm a man. But uh, 
There was, there was a few times, man, some sweet little moments with uh, <laughs> some father-daughter moments and memories that made me just, just want to clutch my daughter. Man, I don't know. Awesome. Just great movie. Why don't I'll... you keep your tears in your eyes where they belong? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Swanson. I know what I'm about as well. Absolutely. <laughs> Jordan, you are in the same state I am right now. And we are not sitting together holding hands mm. recording this podcast, so I am a little bit upset with you, but I guess I still want to know how you're doing anyways. So You know what, I'll just I'll I'll have to just accept that, that you're upset with me and just and move forward, which is exactly what I'm going to do. <laughs> um Wow, you are as cold as the devil. <laughs> That was quite the grieving yeah. process. That's I like that. <laughs> all yeah. stages. Wow, he all just... stages. Yes, all, all of them. No, I'm I'm feeling I'm feeling fantastic. Uh, actually, uh, had the pleasure and the privilege to watch the Packers Bears game with my friend and friend of the podcast Brian Avilas, our, our our resident Bears fan. So it was. Uh, um, it's always a tense affair to a point, but you know we're we're respectful of each other. Not to mention, I have a very good record. The Packers have a very good record when I watch the game with him, so it's really his fault <laughs> for, for, for the Bears losing. He just keeps inviting me over to watch the game, and the results just keep. The only the only time we've watched a game together and the Packers have lost was the Monday night game during the Super Bowl season when we had eighteen penalties. Oh. That's the only time. Mm. That is the only time. So. I'm just glad he invited yes, me thanks, over. Thanks, <laughs> thanks, Brian. From all of us, thank you, Brian. Thank you, thank you, Brian. Yes, and I, I never think... have even broken a sweat in that fourth quarter. <laughs> I know. Um, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> oh, Jordan, Jordan's with the Vilas. Oh, I forgot. We're good. I already, I already, I already took a nap. I knew the game was over. It was great. <laughs> I missed the Jordy catch. I, I heard it was great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was alright. <laughs> I like. I mean, do you guys, you guys think it's a, a pretty big deal that the Packers just tie up the all-time series with the Bears? It's it's kind of awesome. It's remarkable to me with how much we've we've dominated the series in the past, uh, I'd say, <laughs> 10 years or so that <laughs> 20. it wasn't. Dominates the right in, word. Yep. Yeah. It's that, that it wasn't in our favor already. So, but it's, yeah. yeah. I mean, we, we but drew then in. you look back at those 70s and yeah. 80s and it was reversed. So. I try, I try not to. I try not to. It shows how a rivalry it is, man. Yeah, it's, it's, and, then, right. and then you look at, you look at the total points scored in the, in the series between them. I think it was a four, a four point difference. Yeah. And and points scored, and I'm like, like it, this is, I mean, I don't say what you will, but the Packers Bears rivalry is is legendary, um, one of the tops in sports in my mind, and obviously we're we're a little bit biased because it's our team, but um, no, that was that's I in my mind it's freaking awesome, and I love it. So uh, next year we'll be able to we'll be able to take the lead and just rub it in, rub it in their faces. So, um. We are going to get started um, with our patented coin toss segment. If this is your first time listening to us, you are in for a treat. What we do is uh, we have a question uh, set up for all of our intellects here, and I flip a coin, and and these guys have no idea which side of the of the ball they're going to take. So um, the first question I'm going to ask, um, I'm going to get Dusty and no, Brian and Jordan involved in this one. And if I flip the coin, the first off, let me read the question, okay? <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself here. I'm so excited to do this. Um, <laughs> I'm like, I'm, I built up the segment so hard for all these people to just get jacked up about. And then I'm like, and I'm just like failing. But it's all good. Um, the first question I got for you guys is, will the lack of a pass rush be the downfall of the Packers this year? So, um, like I said, it's going to be between Brian and Jordan. And if I flip the coin... And it is heads, Brian. You are going to tell me that the lack of a pass rush is going to end the Packers season one way or another. Okay. And it is heads. The Packers' pass rush is going to be the downfall. Oh my goodness! Well, that's a really easy argument. Um, it's kind of gone in waves. We had a really good pass rush at the beginning of the season. Um, that honestly didn't even result to all that many wins. Um, but it's disappeared in a lot of big games. Um, the Colts comes to mind just being one of the worst offensive lines in football, and we couldn't get a pass rush on Andrew Luck to save our lives. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then, you know, this week against the Bears, you know, if we put that poor of a pass rush against a playoff team, 
we're going to get dominated. And, you know, we almost did get dominated. We almost got, we almost got knocked out of that game. So yeah, it's, it's a really easy argument to make. Clay Matthews hasn't been making any plays this year. Um, Julius Peppers was kind of being saved for later. It kind of feels like later has come and gone. He had a few weeks where he looked really good and he was invisible against the bears this week. Um, I just, I don't see anybody in that front seven that can just take over a game, knocking a quarterback on his butt. Um, you know, Mike Daniels can, can, but he's not a pass rusher. That's not his thing. Um, you need a pass rush in the playoffs. You have to be able to stop a quarterback's rhythm. You have to be able to end a drive just by getting to a quarterback. And our defense just doesn't seem to have that ability. And if you can't take the ball away from quarterbacks like Matt Ryan or Matthew Stafford, yeah, it's, it's going to kill you. So man, unless something big changes, unless clay finally starts making some plays or um, peppers gets hot again. Yeah. It's, it's definitely going to kill our season. Jordan, now is your opportunity to rebuke. Well, you, you mentioned Julius peppers. I mean, it's a few plays, you know, he, he makes like he makes seems like one or two big plays every game. So obviously the ability is there. Um, he seems to do it at very clutch times, which is obviously what a, any defense needs, let alone our defense. So knowing that um, and his ability to get after the quarterback, he, he still has the ability to 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 affect a game just with a couple plays. Um, like in this last game, he had the strip sack. I mean, it was a, it was a huge momentum shift for for the team. Um, it was it was a massive play. I can see him doing that again this this Saturday, um, and this is this is the game you really got to be most concerned about because right now we know that Nick Perry is still recovered from his injury, still got the club on his on his hand, which is you know not a good way to be a effective pass rusher. <laughs> it's all about getting around these linemen, and when you don't have one hand to do that, that's an issue. So, I mean, what I'd like to see is Perry sit out this week, get fully healthy. You know, hopefully we can take care of this Vikings team without him. And then if we get Perry back, another guy who's had a great season for us, a, a playmaker, yeah, I can see this pass rush not uh, not being the downfall of this team. I mean, it was it, I, I don't want to say it was solely the, the downfall for this, almost the downfall for this last game. Um, you know, there are other issues in hand, like the secondary. I mean, if the secondary steps up against the against the Vikings, that, that certainly helps uh, our pass rush out. Um, just if, if we can get longer... Uh, longer snap to throw, you know, t- time intervals, you know, just, just make it difficult for Bradford to find open guys. You know, I saw Stefan Diggs is on the injury report. You know, if he doesn't go, that obviously helps our team out. So if we can get long story short, if we can get Perry back healthy for the lions game and the playoffs going forward, I think our pass rush gets that much more effective and it's not going to be a, a killer for this team. All right. All right. Um, I am going to go ahead and give this win to Jordan wow. solely based solely based on the fact that you know I believe I believe you more than I believe Brian and that's, <laughs> and, um, that's, that's, and that's that's never that, been true and that's uh, that's it, never been true but it is <laughs> but it is and you, you know what I think I think that even even with the club you know I mean that's Nick Perry is just so He's just he's he's been a beast this year, and I think even with the club, he's going to definitely give us at least enough of a pass rush to make things happen. So I believe I believe what you said, Jordan. I believe what you threw down, and that that gave you the victory. So congratulations, Jordan. I am honored, greatly right. honored, John. Thank you, thank, thank you. you, thank that's you. Enough, that's thank enough, you. everybody. That's enough. <laughs> yes. Next next question. Um, Let's do the next question. And Dustin, hey, you are getting involved in this one along with Brian. And my question for you guys is, was benching Demarius Randall the right move? So, Dusty, I'm going to have you um, start this one off for us. And if it is tails, the Packers made the wrong move in benching Demarius Randall. And it is heads. The Packers made the right move in benching Demarius Randall. Yeah, I mean... He wasn't good this past week. I'm I'm a very very big Demarius Randall fan. Uh, but they were they started to struggle. The Packers were struggling a little bit. Randall missed. Um, he m- missed a couple coverages. Uh, but uh, more notably, that was very easy to see in the broadcast. Is he missed missed a couple tackles badly. He took just poor angles. Uh, didn't even attempt to wrap up or wasn't or wasn't able to. 
uh, and let guys go for extra yards against them. Like that, that just can't happen. You're playing a team like the Bears. Uh, you know that they're, that they should be able to run a little bit. You know, you've got guys like, uh, like Jeffrey out there that can make some plays and they had some other guys. Uh, I can't remember if they're good. Apparently, uh, so I'm, I'm a Florida fan. Uh, and I watched Deontay Thompson in Florida and Deontay Thompson was always like fine at Florida. He was fast. Apparently he's like the best receiver of all time. If he goes across the middle, cause Deontay Thompson was just, he was just absolutely murdering us. Um, uh, I mean, it was a problem. Um, so I, I don't, I feel like saying pulling Randall is the right move kind of suggests that, uh, that that was the fix and it wasn't, there was other issues with the defense with their game plan. Some on Sunday, I saw, uh, uh, Gunter was just, just had the clamps just put on Jeffrey, man. Like Jeffrey's the kind of guy that Gunter should be able to lock up. Like he's not overly fast. Gunter's got those long arms. Like he's not going to let you win a whole lot of jump balls. And then they switched him off and it was Rollins playing a lot over on Jeffrey. And then Jeffrey started going nuts. So, uh, I mean, Randall was struggling. I think benching him was the right move. I, I still think he should play this week. Uh, there was some talk that maybe he shouldn't play this week or won't play. I think as long as he's healthy, he should play this week. Uh, but benching him as, as far as kind of how he looked in some plays on Sunday. Yeah. I'd say that's absolutely the right move. All right, Brian. It was absolutely the wrong move. Um, Man, just the way that Micah Hyde was playing in the slot, um, I think Demarius Randall could have matched that production with one leg and both hands tied behind his back. Um, <laughs> Hyde, that's just Hyde's not a good slot corner. He's just not. Um, I don't think it's a coincidence that as soon as Randall was benched, the defense just fell apart. Like Dusty said, um, guys were moved around, different assignments, things like that. All the rhythm that we had going, despite you know his missed tackles and missed coverages. We, we had a, something of a rhythm going and that all just went out the window and boom, three straight drives, 17 points put on the board and a tie game. And I just, I refuse to believe that it's a coincidence that as soon as he was out, that all happened. Uh, I will concede he's been very inconsistent this year. It's been a little bit of a disappointment. He's had some really good games, but he's also had some absolute laughers. Um, but man, I, I can't help but think that that game might have been put away a lot earlier had we just stuck with the game plan, stuck with what was working, and just finished it out. But that's not the Packers' mo. Oh, you guys have you guys are every week. You guys make my job very tough. Um, you guys both bring up phenomenal points, and um, this particular winner is going to be Brian. That felt like pity. I think it was. He was he felt bad about having Jordan <laughs> win that first one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like That's a very fair know, point. <laughs> you know, I am I am all I am all about I am all about, you know, someone's not someone's not producing, get him out of the game, but with with the developmental side of Demarius Randall and he'll just him still just, you know, being a young a young guy in the NFL, yeah, you have to learn lessons but teach him teach him in the classroom like this this kid has shown glimpses of being a very good cornerback in the nfl and um he's got to learn he's got to learn some way so i would i would tend to disagree with benching him um although you almost you almost swoot swooned me away dusty on that one i so, don't know if that's a word john but uh thank you it's sure not, it's a, not it's a word it's, it's, a, it's a it's a it's a johnism it's a johnism so and you know how a bird goes like swoo swoo like, like when it's yeah. Flying, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. Oh. oh my gosh. And uh last last question of our um patented coin toss um segment is going to be between Jordan and Dusty. And the question I have for you guys is is Ty Montgomery a workhorse type back or does he need to be part of a committee? So, um, if I flip the coin and it is heads, Jordan, he is a workhorse back. Coin is in the air. And it is tails. Ty Montgomery needs to be part of a committee. Well, I think for any real rushing attack, you know, minus just a few guys in this league, you need to have a, a, a balanced rushing attack with, with a couple guys. And I think that's what we have with Ty Montgomery. Now, going back to the Bears game, I mean, I think McCarthy 
screwed up in the play call and the fact that you needed to get Ty Montgomery the ball more in that second half. I mean, he was clearly the hot, the hot hand or whatever you want to call it. He was playing fantastic and we didn't get him the ball enough in the second half. You know, and that, that, that kind of stuff can't happen. But whether he can do 20 or 25 carries a game, um, you know, every game, you know, people always say, you know, he's, I don't, we don't know if he has the body for it. Well, I mean, he, he does have the body for it. He's, he's virtually the same size as a Le'Veon Bell. So to, to say he's not, uh, physically capable of doing it, I don't think that's exactly accurate. But, um, we still haven't seen him consistently be a workhorse back. In fact, we haven't seen him in one game where he's a workhorse back. So to say that he is <laughs> going to be most effective in that role, you can't say it with 100% confidence. We haven't even seen it once. So what we saw on this past Sunday was incredibly impressive. And we, we, we've we known of his playmaking ability ever since he got drafted. And this is what we were expecting out of him, not from the running back role, but you get the ball in this guy's hands, he can he can make some plays. But I, I think in order for this offense to truly be lethal, you have a guy like him, you know, going forward, you have Montgomery possibly with an Eddie Lacy, you know, and a Christine Michael. You, just, you have this kind of thunder and lightning, you know, combination that could make this offense very tough to to plan for and defend. Oh, not to mention we have Aaron Rodgers in the backfield with him. You know, this I th- I think if you spread it out a little bit with with Montgomery with with another guy, I think this offense becomes just that much more productive than if it's just Ty Montgomery. We're handing it to him. See if you can stop him. I think that makes it easier for defenses to game plan, and this it would it just would make the offense's job a lot easier if defenses are very confused on where the ball is going dusty i mean i think i think it depends on how you define workhorse back i mean this this is a packers team that traditionally has not or at least uh not traditionally but you know recent history especially with rogers has not been a run heavy team this year they're they're passing the ball over 63 percent of the time and some of that's out of necessity because they are missing some running backs but they consistently are one of the highest uh highest passing teams in the league as far as pass to run calls. So Montgomery ran the ball this past week 16 times. They had like over 160 yards, which is insane. But non-QB scrambles, they ran at a total of 20, which means Montgomery ran at 16. Michael ran at four. Like that, that was it. That's all they ran. I mean, you'd see them sometimes uh, try to force the ball to Lacey a little more, maybe try to get him going. Uh, maybe, maybe get that ratio worked out a little bit. I mean, every every team you play up against is going to be different. But, uh, I mean, with a team like the Packers, that is going to be a little more pass-heavy. Running, I'd argue that running 16 times a game, which I think Montgomery can do, is a workhorse back. He's he's not going to run. He could run. I believe he could run like 25 times a game. But I don't think the Packers are going to ask him to do that because that's just not the offense they run. Uh, I think he's going to be back there quite a bit. I think they're going to use him on some passing plays. We saw him running in the flat quite a bit. Uh, I think as they kind of get him a little bit even more in that running back role, we're going to see some more stuff like I hope we we're going to see last year when he got injured is some stuff in the running in the backfield. Maybe him and Cobb, maybe him and Michael motion him out. You get a matchup with a linebacker like He's a running back with the skill set of a of a wide receiver. I don't know that I've actually seen this before. Like he's a wide receiver. I think he ran the ball twenty times in college, uh, thirty times in college. His patience at the line for a running back is is incredible. But he still has wide receiver skill set. Like they could do a bunch of different stuff with him. But I I do think he's going to line up on the backfield a lot. And I think if you're looking at the Packers, I think say 15, 20 carries a game like. That's a workhorse, and I think he's more than capable of doing it. I think the Packers are going to start giving it to him that, that much. You know, it's um, it's very funny because I had the um, this I I read the countdown to kickoff. Not trying to plug myself or anything, but uh, I had the, to us over to your I side, did a John. video. I, yes, exactly. You don't want to talk about Dusty. <laughs> and um, I actually had I actually had the um, I actually did had the privilege of doing a video version. Um, this past week and what I said in the videos, you know, you don't get to hear a lot of my a lot of my voice when you guys are doing the podcast because when we're doing the podcast because you guys say everything that I want to say. <laughs> and Dusty, you you started you started that off with exactly what I probably would have ended um, ended your guys' coin toss with. And that's just it's not the Packers style to to run the ball that much. And I was going to reference, you know the 63 percent and all that stuff so you absolutely just crushed jordan on this, <laughs> on this on this coin toss um and that gives that gives each of you guys a win tonight but dusty for 
overall performance, you have taken the coin toss Ooh. segment. I mean, you just crushed our patented coin toss <laughs> segment. <bud. laughs> like the whole time I'm doing it, like Jordan's just nodding as well. He's like, yep, yeah, no, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's like, yep, yeah, that that's really good. Yep. Oh, and um, thank you. Yeah, you you crushed it, dude. Cheers. Cheers. To cheers. You, Dusty. cheers. And um, speaking of cheers. Uh, we are in a very, very cheerful uh, time of the year, and when you're in a cheerful spirit, you want to buy things. <laughs> and and Jordan, Jordan, I think we have things to buy uh, from a sponsor who sponsors us. So go ahead, Jordan. All right. Yes, that was a fantastic lead-in, by the way, John. One, one of your best. Guys, it's only, it's only, <laughs> it's only it. the best. It's only the best. <laughs> No, well, the, the the sponsor that John is talking about is is Pride and Glory Clothing Company. We've talked about them every week now for quite a while. Uh, last week I mentioned uh, their famous uh, sweep T-shirts uh, with the famous Lombardi play diagram down the front. Uh, I said last week you can pre-order them. Well, there's no need to pre-order them. They are in. And you can order them right now at prideandglory63.com. Not only can you do that, you can use the promo code HOLIDAY15. That's HOLIDAY15, and you'll get 15% off your order. Can't beat that. You cannot beat that. So check out prideandglory63.com for all your Packers apparel. Earlier this week, Brian had the opportunity to sit down with a very near and dear um, contributor to our podcast, uh, Eric Thompson. He writes... For SB Nation, Daily Nordsman, and here is said interview. All right, guys, I am here with Eric Thompson, the ghost of Viking Packer games yet to come. Eric, how you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me back on. Good to have you on. Um, I think you've been on for every single Packers Vikings game we've had for Pack to the Future, so. So I'm I'm kind of I'm a half good luck charm because I think we've split the meetings <laughs> since you've had me on. So, <laughs> well, I guess we'll just hope that that continues for our sake. Um, all right, so so getting to Sunday's game, um, Adrian Peterson a couple weeks ago said something about wanting to come back from his injury, but only if the Vikings were in the playoff race. You guys are still technically alive. Um, didn't look his very best on Sunday. Hasn't really looked very best even when healthy this season. So what's your feeling on what Adrian Peterson might do to us on Sunday? Um, well, if it's, if the, well, I guess two and a half games that he's played this season are an indication along with the games that he missed with the running offense, uh, at a historically bad yards per carry rate, um, I don't think you're going to have to expect too much. I know Adrian's had some giant games against the Packers in the past, and I think it's nice for the Vikings fans to hope for something along those lines. I mean, even at this moment, something even close to a 100-yard game would be absolutely out of this world. But I don't think Vikings fans are holding their breath. I've I've joked already this season that... uh, you could have Tech Mobile Bo Jackson running behind this offensive line, and he still wouldn't get very many yards. So it's um, it's kind of sad because I think we're getting really close to an era. Um, like you mentioned, the playoff chances are, are still flickering a little bit for Minnesota, but uh, they have to win out, and a whole bunch of things have to go right for them. So it's pretty much uh, that loss to the Colts has pretty much ended their, their playoff chances. So... And um, Adrian did say he was, he was only going to come back for um, a playoff run, basically. And uh, this Saturday might seal it whether the Vikings win or not. So it's um, I really don't expect a whole lot from him down the stretch um, just because the, the rushing offense has been so dismal the entire season. And it's probably, you know, it's if I had to guess right now, these are probably the last couple of weeks that Adrian Peterson is going to be in a Vikings uniform. All right. Yeah, that was kind of going to be my follow-up was, do you think it's Adrian Peterson is done, or do you think it really is just the offensive line, combination of both? Well, I think, uh, I don't think, I think the days of the 2012 Adrian Peterson are probably past us by now. He's even as bionic as he is, he has, he's had two major knee surgeries in the past four or five years, and he's been, and he's going to be, I think, 32 at the beginning of next season. It's just, 
I, I don't think you're going to be, be able to expect him to run for 1,500 yards and 15 touchdowns, on, no matter where he's playing, unless maybe that behind that Dallas offensive line, because I think even mediocre running backs could probably rack up some yards behind them. But I think it's... Um, I think this is probably the end of Peterson's time in Minnesota just because um, he's due $18 million next year, which is an absolutely ridiculous number for almost any running back, much less someone that's definitely on the, the latter stages of his career. So unless he's willing to come back and take a pretty hefty discount, I'd be pretty surprised if we saw number 28 again in purple. All right. Maybe we could trade Adrian Peterson and we give you Clay Matthews because kind of feels like similar situations right now. Um, yeah, I don't know if I could ever bring myself to root for Clay. Maybe <laughs> I could, but it's <laughs> just this is all. I, I'm actually I've, I've been a fan, or not a fan of him, but I've, I've tolerated him as a player. I, th- I respect his play, but those commercials are just getting terrible. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, switching gears to the Vikings defense. Um, it's been your strength this year, but Sunday you got shellacked by the Colts. Um, can Packer fans expect something similar on Sunday? Um, run us through what happened. Well, I think uh, it started with the fact that Harrison Smith, who is one of the best safeties in the NFL, if not the best safety in the NFL, missed that game. And it just kind of, I think it really unraveled from there. Um, the pass rush was surprisingly absent. Um, at the very least, you thought they could get Andrew Luck off his spot and make him scramble and make some plays, uh, but they really didn't even do that. Um, the defensive ends coming into the game combined uh, between Daniil Hunter, Brian Robison, and Everson Griffin, I think had something like 26 sacks coming into the game between the three of them, and they really didn't do too much. Uh, there were a lot of really boneheaded plays, most notably the uh, Linval Joseph, all 320-some pounds of him, trying to hurdle uh, the center <laughs> uh, on a 21-yard <laughs> field goal um, that turned three points for Indianapolis early into seven. Uh, it just seemed like everything that could have gone wrong with that defense last week did go wrong. And now do I expect it to be as bad in Green Bay this coming week? No, I think they'll clean a lot of these things up. But it doesn't sound very good for Harrison Smith to come back from the high ankle sprain. So I would be pretty surprised if he did play. And if he's out, he is such, he is the heart and soul of that defense because he can cover everything in the back end. He can really, uh, help shore up the run game. Now that you guys have this wide receiver running all over the place, uh, these last few weeks out of the backfield, um, I'm, my level of concern is pretty high for exactly how, um, they're going to be able to stop. Rodgers and Montgomery and and Nelson and uh, this Packers offense on Saturday. All right, and I apologize. I keep on saying this game is on Sunday. I'm not used to these Saturday games. But... I know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's it's a one weird, uh, it is one off thing. It is. All right. So tell me what you think the Vikings need to do on Saturday in order to get a win. Well, I think um, basically look at the game film of, against Indianapolis and do everything exactly the opposite. <laughs> I think that's a really good start. Um, I think the, they're going to have to do a lot of the things that they did um, in that Week 2 victory over the Packers. I think they're going to have to pressure Rodgers. Um, they're going to have to cover really well on the outside. I think they can, they're can. they still capable of that. They have Xavier Rhodes on the outside, who's uh, just got named to the Pro Bowl, I think deservingly so. He's had a really good year overall. Uh, they have uh, Captain Munnerlin in the slot, who's done a really good job historically against Green Bay. Terrence Newman, the ageless wonder, on the other side, outside. The, um, I think he's uh, still producing at a high level, even at, in his very late 30s. Um, but they're, but they're not going to be able to cover for eight, nine seconds the way that Rodgers can extend plays. So it's a, it's a matter of getting that pass rush to Rodgers, but also containing him so he can't extend these plays and scramble outside because that's where he does a lot of his damage historically against the Vikings. And it's just going to be a matter of not making mistakes. Um, and Everson Griffin, as great as he's been uh, this year, it seems like once or twice a game he has that crucial third down where he gets too hyped up and he gets drawn off sides. And we all know that Rodgers' cadence uh, likes to get those free plays. And the, the Vikings basically have to play... With, with how anemic their offense has been for the majority of this season, they're going to have to play just about flawless on defense to, um, to pull out the victory on, on Saturday. All right. Why don't you go ahead and give me your final score prediction? Um, 
I I haven't written my preview yet, and that'll come out I think on Thursday out in Daily Noisman. But um, I think, and it's one of those things where all the signs, at least all the trends, are kind of pointing to oh, this is going to be an ugly game. The Packers are going to run away with this one. The way that Green Bay has been playing coming into this game, compared to the Vikings are on a two and seven stretch right now after their five and zero start. Um, but the Vikings, especially this season, always seem to kind of um, to to do the opposite of what you're going to expect. I know I've I've looked through my picks this year and the team that I write about, the Vikings, I'm I'm six and eight picking their games this year, which is absolutely <laughs> like there's only one other team. I think the Lions I'm picking worse. But everyone else <laughs> so the the two teams in it and the NFC North that I cover, um I, I can't figure either of those teams out. But um I so so in that in that vein I'm probably going to pick the Packers and I think it's gonna be It'll probably be just because it's the Vikings. They'll 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 get our hopes up throughout the game. They'll keep it close. I think it's gonna probably be a lot like that Dallas game where points might be hard to come by here and there. But um, I think ultimately just how how both of these teams are playing, and I just don't see how the the offensive line is gonna hold up against that Green Bay pass rush consistently enough to to move the ball and get in the end zone enough. So I'll I'll say something along the lines of. I'm, this might be subject to change by actually, the time I actually write it down on Thursday, but I'll say something along the lines of 24-16 Green Bay. All right. All right, Eric, last thing. Tell the good people where they can find you on the internet. Um, you can find me on Twitter. I'm way too busy out there all the time. on uh, Eric underscore J underscore Thompson, which is a super <laughs> lengthy Twitter <laughs> handle, but since I have a super common name, that's what I had to go with. And uh, you can find all of my work covering the Vikings. Uh, I have my big weekly preview that usually posts on Thursdays. And I've had a couple features and interviews. I got to interview Stefan Diggs last week. That was pretty cool. Nice. Um, a couple other, and just the usual uh, week-to-week kind of things, the news and notes, I'm, I'm usually on top of that as well. Um, you can find that all at dailynorseman.com. Wonderful. Thank you very much for joining us, Eric. All right. Thanks for having me on. And now we are getting back in. And now we are getting back into our coverage of the green and gold. Big, big time matchup this week. Vikings at Lambeau. Got to win this game. Brian, how do the Packers win this game? Ugh. What's the point? I keep on saying things and then the Packers do the opposite and somehow find a way to win anyway. <laughs> So that's kind of been the the theme of the last month, but uh, did you ever think maybe it's something to do with be, you? Just Brian? be better no. at your job, no. Brian. Just be better. No, this is this is all Mike McCarthy. Um, my conspiracy theory at current is that he listens to the show. McCarthy listens to the hey, show and goes, "I'm going to plan a game plan around what Brian said, so I can do the opposite and still win, just to shut him up." <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's what happened. And it backfired for four <laughs> weeks straight when they lost those four games. And then it start he like he found the right the right mix. Okay. Um so something that uh <laughs> okay. something that Eric was able to touch on was uh injuries. Um so a couple injuries we need to exploit. One, of course, being Harrison Smith. Um, as Eric said, that's the heart and soul of that defense. Uh, without him, they they j- might as well not even have a secondary. That man controls everything from the back that man covers everything from the back and without him it's a major issue that we should be able to exploit much like we did uh when the the seahawks were missing earl thomas uh we were able to just pick apart that secondary we should be able to do the same thing now so we need to do that one uh the other one uh, sounds like stefan diggs might be out so that's the guy that just totally took us I mean, I, he just destroyed us in week two. It just absolutely destroyed us. And Dom Capers never did a thing about it. Just kept on going to Marius Randall one-on-one coverage against Stefan Diggs. And it kept on backfiring. And he never changed a thing. And eventually we lost that game. Well, looks like no Stefan Diggs. So we should be able to to exploit, you know, cornerback versus receiver matchups as well. And maybe focus on getting a little bit of a pass rush. Considering we're up against just... Uh, an insult of an offensive line just absolutely terrible (laughs) just terrible 
Um, the other thing is, you know, one of my running themes for what we need to do to win, and that is to control the middle of the field. Um, you've heard me say it 30 or 40 times in our 14 games that we've played so far. But, man, just every week, every week, we're we're talking about how the middle of our field got exploited. And it, it happened again in the fourth quarter. Um, something changed in that fourth quarter. And they just started burning us, and it opened up all kinds of things for their offense to make that comeback. So, man, dear Mr. Dom Capers, just do something about the <laughs> middle of the field. Um, to his credit, um, we've done much better about uh, much better with tight ends lately, and that's been kind of Morgan Burnett lining up across from them. So, while Kyle Rudolph is probably what I'm most afraid of on their offense this week, uh, I, have, I have pretty good confidence that Morgan Burnett in his new kind of hybrid safety linebacker role can can do a little something about that. So, um, yeah, I'm, that's what I'm looking for. And then um, the other the other injury is potentially Peterson missing out again. I really hope not, just because I know he hasn't played much this season, but the playing time he's had has been awful. So I, I actually really hope that we get to see Adrian Peterson this week, maybe run uh, three times for three yards and a fumble and uh, just kind of <laughs> hand us the game. So that's what I'm hoping for. That's what I'm looking for. Um, having said all that, I, I do think the Packers will get their fifth straight win and they'll come to within one game <clears throat> of finishing Aaron Rodgers' prophecy and running the table. <sighs> a score, um, I'm going to say 24-13. Packers will handle business. All right. And Dusty, I mean, you already gave us a nice, tasty hors d'oeuvre of numbers earlier in the show. Um, give us give us the entree here. I, first of all, I don't I don't know what any of that means. Um, and Brian, uh, I <laughs> Thank I you. never want to see Adrian Peterson, man. Like, even if he's bad, I never want to see him. All it takes is one I, play. I, I, I second that. One I second play. that. Man, go, go re-watch. I triple go that. Go re-watch his No, I don't. Like, that's the thing. Two. Like, I don't care. Like, I know he's not good, but he will, he's more than capable of still ripping off like 180 yarder, man. And that's all it takes. Like the behind that offensive line. I don't think we've seen it before, but, uh, but anyway, I I don't want to fight with Brian. That's, that's something we normally do. We do it before and after we record (laughs) normally as we come to blows, little fisticuffs, but we, I don't want to do that now. So, um, all right. So, I mean, Brian talked about the Vikings offense and they're not good. They're 50, that's 55th. That would be really bad. Uh, they're 25th on the league (laughs) in points per game at 18.9. Uh, and they're 27th and by DVOA. Uh, and they're, but they're still holding opponents, opponents to less. They're holding opponents to 18.5. So there's still, that's the six lowest points per game in the league. So while the offense is bad and seems like have steadily gotten worse as season's gone on. Uh, their defense is still solid and they still have the fifth ranked pass defense in the league. So, uh, so the Packers may have a hard time, uh, getting a whole lot of, uh, of big plays in the passing game. Now, in, in that week two matchup that was in Minnesota, Minnesota turned in, uh, their best defensive performance of the year while the Packers turned in far and away their worst, uh, per football outsiders DVOA. Uh, Vikings, as I mentioned, Vikings defense is still playing well, but the Packers offense is looking much better. That was the game, uh, in case you forgot it. And I don't know why you would like Minnesota look like to be dominating that early. They won 17, 14 and the game pretty much ended when Rogers threw a ball too far to the inside on a comeback route to Devonte Adams that got picked off because Adams did not come back to the ball. Not neither of those things are happening now. Rodgers has been, been, been much more accurate, and Devontae Adams has been much more aggressive than he was at that point. So it's not it's not going to take much. Um, it's I do think it's going to be low scoring though, uh, and one of the things that could help out with the Packers winning the game. So for the year, the Vikings are third in turnover margin with plus point six per game, uh, but. There have been negative one for the past three games. They've been giving the ball up a little more. Uh, on the other side of the ball, the Packers are tied for eighth in the league with a plus 0.4 turnover margin, but they're plus 0.33 over the past three games. So the Vikings are turning the ball over a little more uh, while not getting as quite as many as they had before. Well, the Packers are limiting turnovers that they had earlier while forcing more. Now, the Seahawks' six turnover game does skew that a bit, but they forced, even if you... Like, even if you count out the Matt Barkley Hail Mary at the end of the first half, they still forced two interceptions last game. So, I mean, they're, they're playing better. 
Vikings were plus two when they met in, in uh, week two, and they still only won by three points with the Packers getting a chance to go down and win it or tie it at the end. Turnovers are going to be the story. I mean, that's that's really easy to say of most games, but I don't. I see the Packers maybe having one turnover here. Uh, they're going to need to either be even or plus one in this game. Uh, that that's going to be huge. And and Brian, you mentioned um, you mentioned the Vikings offensive line, and they're not good. But Bradford's really good at getting the ball out quickly. They're eleventh in the league at allowing pressure at eighteen point seven percent. So uh, we talked about the pass rush earlier. Like pass rush isn't going to get there. They're not going to make a whole lot of plays. What they're going to have to do is try to make Bradford just slightly uncomfortable and just get your hands up, man. Just block those passing lanes. Uh, those quick throws usually means the ball coming out a little low. They're going to have to just get those hands up. Uh, last thing here, I was actually going to talk about Diggs, but with him being out, I'll, I'm not really going to talk about that. Uh, the Vikings only have – this This was pretty incredible to me. On the year, the Vikings have three offside penalties and zero 12 men on the field penalties. So don't expect to see any free plays from Rodgers here. Uh, they're very disciplined on that side of the ball. Uh, as far as score prediction, uh, with if uh, I feel better about this if Diggs is out. Like Diggs really hasn't been great this season. He just <laughs> he's had a couple of good games, and one of them was just like he just murdered us. Uh, but last game they got killed by Diggs. Offense wasn't clicking. They had a whole lot of pieces not working well. Rodgers was off, and they they still only gave up 17 points on defense, and were very very close to tying or winning that game. Uh, this time the Vikings aren't looking as good. The Packers are coming into this game hot, looking good. Uh, maybe not on both sides of the ball, definitely offensively. I see another low scoring game, uh, but Packers coming out victorious this time around. I'm going to give it uh, green Bay 20 to 10, 20 to 10. All right. Um, I am going to go ahead and say the Packers will win this game 31 to 13 and Jordan, what do you think is going to happen on Sunday? Well, I tend to think, you know, it's, it's kind of, I don't want to say cliche. It's, it's kind of the safe thing to say. It's, it's going to be low scoring. Uh, when you look at the Vikings defense and you look at their offense, <laughs> uh, it all kind of points towards being a low scoring game. But I think the way that the Packers offense, uh, has been playing in stretches, I think is going to, um, cancel out the effectiveness for the most part of the Vikings defense. So I think we get up into the mid twenties. Um, I think our defense, I don't think it's going to be a shutdown game against Sam Bradford. Unfortunately, I'd love I would love, I would love nothing more for that to be the case. Um, but I think we give up a, a little. I give up a little bit. The Packers are are playing much better than the Vikings are right now, and it's not even close. I mean, the Vikings. This is this is quite the stunning collapse, really, for for a team uh, going from five and zero to seven and seven. I mean, they're pretty much where the Packers were at last season and probably more so. I mean, it's, it's, it's been, it's been a quite, quite the fall. Um, so you got two desperate teams, you know, playing for a playoff spot. I mean, it's, it's virtually a must win for both teams, but it, one team is clearly playing better right now. Not to mention it's a home game at Lambeau. Uh, I'm going Packers 26 to 16. All right. And now this is your moment to shine. Jordan, you get to read Twitter questions. <laughs> 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 do we have any <laughs> well now now the now the pressure's on <laughs> what? read them we, read them well we, time for a 60 yard hail mary jordan <laughs> gonna drop a dime right into jordy's hands just watch <laughs> all right we do have a couple questions um we have two questions actually from uh the username jenny craig uh it's at shirley sees her uh, first question is, do we need to or can we hire an offensive coordinator? Um, I mean, right now our offensive coordinator is is Edgar Bennett um, in title anyway. <laughs> um, I'm guessing uh, Shirley is, is referring to, you know, a pl- actual play caller um, and maybe, you know, taking the reins from Mike McCarthy. The offense is not really the issue right now. I mean, there's there's things that can be done to, to improve, but I mean, I – you don't want to change up too much with a with a unit that's that's playing pretty well right now, um, so I don't think there's anything really needs to be changed there. I don't anticipate a change in the play calling at all. Um, you know, we at all of Packer Nation was clamoring for it last year, and it happened, and it didn't go well. <laughs> uh, it didn't go strikingly better once McCarthy got it back, but this season, the way the season has progressed, this offense is is really starting to click. So, for me, I, I see no reason to to make a change at the offensive coordinator position or, or with the play calling duties. There's no reason to, unless it's going to be a whole new offense. 
just like massive change. So, I mean, you're not going to come in, you're not going to bring anybody in that's going to know Mike McCarthy's system better than Edgar Bennett or <laughs> Tom Clements. <laughs> um, so really there, there's no point to it unless you're going to have a massive overhaul and bring in a whole new system and, and style of play. So. I mean, I wouldn't mind seeing it, and I have, I mean, Jordan mentioned Edgar Bennett, possibly a name only. I mean, that's, I mean, that's part of it for me, is I don't know how big of a say a lot of these guys have in things. I don't know how big of a part of the offense Edgar Bennett is, is if he's just kind of a glorified position coach, or if he kind of sits in and just says, yes, that looks good, Mike. Like, I, I really don't know. I mean, what I have seen this year, and what, and what, what has been frustrating is, their turnaround uh, is due to a lot of things. Rogers been playing better. Uh, they they got. I mean, they found ways to use Montgomery. Uh, they've been getting some turnovers, but the offense has changed. Uh, maybe not changed completely, but a lot of the pre-snap stuff, a lot of their looks, they're doing a lot of stuff that they weren't doing before that they should have been doing. A whole lot of. Uh, say, uh, delayed crossers or, or trying to pick guys off, bunch routes, motion. Like, they, they're they doing a whole lot of stuff that they were not doing before. And what's frustrating me about that is a lot of that stuff's relatively simple, and the rest of the league is doing it, and they could have done that way before, and they didn't. It took them so long to adapt. That's the frustrating thing, is that I can see maybe some of this offense maybe getting bogged down, and it's going to take them a season to change what they're doing. It's going to take them a season to, to see. I mean... McCarthy is the coach, the head coach of this team, of the whole team. To have someone just looking at the offense and just saying, we need a tweak here, we need a tweak there, I really think part of the reason it's delayed is because Marthy, McCarthy just has attention other places. Now, whether that's Edgar Bennett uh, stepping up a little more or whether that's bringing in someone from outside, like I don't know, but I wouldn't mind seeing someone other than McCarthy. Uh, and, and like you said, it, if it's Bennett, that's fine. That's Bennett. He knows McCarthy's system. He knows these players. He knows what works. I think someone other than the, other than the head coach at this point needs to be involved in the offense because the changes I've seen have just taken entirely too long to do that. Would you guys? I know he's I know he's with the Colts organization right now, but would you guys ever entertain a return of Joe Philbin? I would love that. I would love that. That one would make sense. That one would make a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. I mean, you talk about a guy that knows the system, and it wouldn't take long to get plugged back in. Yes, and that would be a very. <laughs> uh, that would be a very Ted move. Yeah. I mean, just to not bring anybody. It's more just the fact you, he wouldn't bring any in anybody new. Yeah. Um, but in, I mean, this. are you gonna? He's Ted. Talk about Ted moves. He's not gonna demote Edgar Bennett. He's not gonna fire. No, Tom that's Clemens. that's not. There's nowhere to put Joe Philbin. I hear so. you. No, that, and that's not what I meant. My, I'd my meant, it, what I what, what I meant was just more familiarity. Um, like he doesn't sure. just go for the the. the wholesale changes so which is what sure. you, you know you, you were talking about there's not going to be a wholesale change to this offense so to bring in somebody new i think would defeat the purpose all right um second question uh chances of the packers landing rex ryan and i assume she means as as defensive coordinator uh, as i put team, that as team gesture oh is that what it is <laughs> Just, oh, that's, gesture. that changes my answer um <laughs> as de as defensive i put it next to nothing um I mean, I think he's a, I think he's a good defensive coach. Obviously, players like playing for him. He gets players up for games. I mean, he's got a lot of great qualities for a coach. Um, that being said, there's a couple reasons. One, I think another team will give him a shot at a head coaching job. Um, I was a little surprised actually when the Bills let him go when they did. Um, you know, uh, the Bills are not the most talented team and they're, you know, we're in the playoff hunt for, you know, quite a while. So, I mean, they, seven they, there's gotta be seven. Yeah. They're they're there, and that's 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 partly for him. So to to let him go like the way they did, that was surprising. Uh, I think another team gives him a shot as a head coach, and obviously that's not going to be in Green Bay. Um, not to mention, I I just I can't imagine those two personalities, McCarthy and Ryan, <laughs> in, a, in a in a coach's room. Oh my goodness, that would be that's a like, that's that's it, that's a sitcom or just it, I don't. <laughs> I can't picture. I cannot picture it at all. <laughs> it'd be like Mike Dicka. It'd be like Mike and Buddy, Buddy Ryan. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Oh man, I don't know. So, so to put <laughs> to put the chances of this happening in terms of temperature. So thirty-two <laughs> degrees Fahrenheit is freezing, right? Yes. Okay. So we need to go lower than that. All the way down to zero. You know, now we're getting really cold, right? I'm gonna go absolute zero. I like which, it. Which. If you are unfamiliar with um, science in general, 
absolute zero, um, as it equates to the Fahrenheit scale, would be negative 459.67 degrees. Oh, Brian, you're That's... so smart. You can look at Google. Oh, <laughs> Try Wikipedia. Try Wikipedia, brother. <laughs> Point is, from Google. that's really super cold. Um, end of humanity cold. And I, I would predict end of humanity before I would predict Rex Ryan being a coach in Green Bay. But my, um, my youngest brother has been, uh, for probably five years now, concocting scenarios in which Rex Ryan gets fired as being a head coach and ends up as defensive coordinator at Green Bay. Like, he's been working on this. Like, even back when he was, like, very, very successful. Like, Scotty, this is like it's not going to happen, man. Um, but And now we have uh, Capers. This is Capers. And, uh, and, Ryan, and Ryan's out there, man. Uh, but, yeah, I'm, I'm going to agree with everyone else. Like, I would love to have him just as a defensive coordinator just because he's got the mind for it. Uh, he's, like, mm-hmm. the Brian mentioned, um, or Jordan, I can't remember which one. You guys are you guys are the same to me. Yeah. Um, that players <laughs> players seem to love playing for him. Like they really, really love playing for him. He gets players up for the game, but his schemes are solid. Like he he takes every mm-hmm. game, he treats it well. He he knows he knows how to even if he doesn't have the talent. Like his schemes are always very very interesting, um, and he's very very good at what he does. I'd love to have him, but I can't see this Packers team that's very straight laced uh, bringing in Rex Ryan. Uh, yeah. Like. Our defensive coordinator now like is routinely known for falling asleep in the booth, like they're, right. and they're fi- and they're fine with it. That's the reason they've kept him around as long right. as they have. They're not bringing in Rex Ryan, and Rex Ryan is exactly the kind of coach that this defense needs. Yeah. But if they pass on Wade Phillips, yeah. and they pass on Jim Schwartz, no way they go after Rex yeah. Ryan. And it, it that mentality drives me nuts. I, I hate it, but that's just the mentality that's there. Yeah. So. I think that I think that um, Rex Ryan and Aaron Rodgers would really butt heads when it comes down to predicting things too. Like, they might have a good would, time. Yeah, it, it could be it could be a good time for him. I I, I switch I, I changed my mind. I am <laughs> agreeing with Dusty. So. <laughs> <laughs> John, All right, that, we have one oh, more. We got one. We got one more, John. So how about you just let me talk? I'll shut oh, up. sorry. I'll okay, shut up. that was mean. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the last the last question we have is from Shannon B at Babs the Batgirl, uh, actually a writer for Pact of the Future. If you have not read her stuff, uh, you really should. She's she's very good at it. Uh, her really, question is really should. Yes, yeah. indeed, indeed. Her question is: Are you at all concerned about Rogers' calf? Uh, yeah, I mean, absolutely. He's shown ability to play. Uh, play well with these injuries but he's not he's not peak Aaron Rodgers right now his ability to throw the ball hasn't hasn't diminished but what's made him so devastating to other defenses is his ability to run and he can barely do it I mean it was I cringed every time he took a hit against Chicago and that's that then that's my concern is that all it takes is just one hit and we're looking at Brett Hundley out there and just that's you know, you don't want to think about it, but that's a very real possibility. And and the way the that pairs game went with him just running for it, that was that was terrifying to me. <laughs> so that that can't happen against the Vikings. They need uh, to give him more time. And Rodgers needs to be smarter too. There there are some times there that if you're not going to pick up the first down, don't take the hit. Throw it away. Avoid the hits. He he's got to be a little bit smarter. That was that was a little bit annoying to me. But uh, there is concern, um, mainly just that he, in terms of reaggravating or, or aggravating an injury, but. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean that's that's really all I have to say about that. I'm not concerned at all, to be honest, for two reasons. One, we don't have to play in Dominic and Sue anytime, <laughs> so there's no chance of somebody just like stomping on his on his calf and then pretending that he didn't know what he was doing. Oh man, I loathe, <laughs> loathe, loathe that man. Um, and number two, his his calf issue, from what I can tell, was much more serious in 2014. And he still put up numbers then, and he still played like a really good Hall of Fame quarterback. And right now, he's got a calf issue, and he's still playing like a really good Hall of Fame quarterback. So, I mean, if he performed when the injury was that much worse, I don't have any concerns to the effect that he can't do it now. Hall of Fame quarterback, I'm sorry, Brian, he doesn't talk to his family, he's bad. Have have we forgotten his family life here, you guys? (laughs) 
Aaron Rodgers no, is still not over that hussy that I, he's dating. I don't CMC understand. Bro. I don't understand why <laughs> we're talking about him. Yeah, I mean, CMC yeah, the the numbers are better, but come on, guys, come on, like his personal life, you guys. It's, can we talk about that? So, yes. So, sorry, sorry. I agree. Uh, I mean, I think I fall more with Jordan than Brian, but I think I kind of split. I may kind of split the difference between them, like. Brian mentioned 2014. He is looking way better than he was in 2000. In 2014, he could barely move. Like he's not running. There was, mm-hmm. <laughs> there was a <laughs> play against the Bears this past weekend where he broke the pocket and he had a wide open field and he just jogged. Like he couldn't do anything above a yeah. jog. I mean, that's what Jordan mentioned. Like he he could take a hit. He can't really do much outside of there. He, he I don't know if he got it warmed up a little. He looked a little better as the game went on, but uh, 2014 looked like he could barely move. He's sliding in the pocket really, really well now. He looks way better than he did. He can move enough to avoid rushers, uh, which is good. Like he can't break the pocket, and he should not break the pocket. Uh, but he is—he's looking good. Like if, if you didn't know it was Aaron Rodgers, and he's just a pocket passer back there, he's looking really, really good. So I mean, I'm concerned to the extent that. Yeah, I'm concerned because the quarterback has an injured calf, and all it takes is not even one hit. All it takes is one wrong step to strain that a little more, and then suddenly that's more serious, and we got the playoffs possibly coming up. It's, I'm concerned, but uh, I mean the way he's playing right now, uh, he's he's playing through it, and he's still looking really, really good, and that's oh, it's exciting. Well, I mean, just going back to what Jordan was saying about Brett Hundley. Um, you know, possibly being out there. Um, I was of the mindset that Brett Hundley should have been starting seven weeks ago, guys. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, so yeah, that, that's not that's not that's not a valid point to bring up, Jordan. Okay, we all know that <laughs> Brett Hundley should have been starting seven weeks ago. Brett Hundley okay? is dating a nice Christian girl. Yes, nice he is. Values <laughs> goes to potluck on the, on the weekends. Family potlucks. <laughs> that's what Brett Hundley should be quarterback of our team. <laughs> He texts his parents every, oh, yeah. from the sideline every week, every every game. Just before every game, he says, "Love you, mom," with a little heart. That's right. Doesn't send his Christmas presents back. I don't know if any of this is true. It is. TMZ TMZ reported it. Oh, jeez. Well, thank you for sending your Twitter questions, guys. It could be it could be your question next week. Send them in. We love answering them. It's one of my favorite segments. I don't know about you guys, but. Um, I love I love the Twitter question segment. And to if be anything, fair, we really only have like three segments. Yeah. So to say it's one of your favorites, that's true. It's yeah, one, yeah. One, of, one of his three favorites. Yeah. Stop <laughs> stop making our show sound so bland, Brian. <laughs> it's a great it's a great podcast. Um, and, and even and, and and the bare minimum too is like we will mention your Twitter handle. So we have we have about two million listeners every week, and <laughs> you might you might gain some followers. So um, send in your Twitter questions. We love answering them. And um, now we are going to continue into one of our three segments, which is called Final Thoughts. <laughs> and um, Brian, what are your final thoughts? I am so excited for Christmas. I'm still like a little kid this time of year. I just get all giddy. Um, got a little bit of family coming in. Going to see Rogue One on Friday. Whoa. So no spoilers, please. Um, going skiing on Monday and probably Tuesday as well. Um, the only rough part is that I'll have to pick up my sister-in-law at the airport at two in the morning on, on Friday. So Oof. that'll be good fun, but oh, I'm not you... working on Friday, so I'm all, it's all good. So I'm excited. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, happy holidays, whatever it is you're celebrating this year. <laughs> make it fun. Um, I'm going to mention all of them just because it'll make Donald Trump mad. Um, <laughs> so you can find me on twitter at pttf underscore brian you can find us on twitter at pttf underscore podcast make sure you're listening to the sweep as well make sure you're reading every single article that comes out at pack to the future.com keep your eyes open in the next couple days jordan and i made a coin toss video today so that'll be a special treat for your eyeballs brian even even read the countdown to kickoff article especially the countdown to kickoff article oh <laughs> fancy that um, fancy that and uh dusty what are your final thoughts all right i've got three uh first i want to do i always look at uh cheap tickets uh cheapest tickets uh, i was going to espn see i think it's through Ticketmaster. so i'm uh, just looking at this next coming week what's the cheapest games you can go to and this week fellas we have a tie 
We have a tie for the lowest ticket, Ooh. and they're both under ten dollars, which is Score. doubly exciting. Um, <laughs> first up, <laughs> the five and nine San Diego Chargers roll into Cleveland to face the 0-14 Cleveland Browns. Now, <laughs> the past couple weeks, I know last week, I think they went up against Buffalo, and the week before that was Cincinnati. And both weeks, I think I mentioned something of, this is this is probably their best chance to finally win a game. Um, and it was not. And they got blown out both times, just <laughs> badly, by terrible, terrible, terrible teams. San Diego's 5-9. and nine. Like, San Diego's not terrible. Uh, Phillip Rivers is good. But San Diego is not good. Still, they will beat Cleveland by 30 points. Cleveland will go to 0 and 15 <laughs> with one game left, and you can see it all for the low, low price of nine dollars. I bought a six pack of local uh, Christmas ale uh, this week that was uh, 14 dollars. That was more expensive than going to this game. So, so there you go. Uh, the second one up, which is also nine dollars, is. Uh, the nine nine and five, the nine and five that Miami Dolphins. Now Tannehill is down, but you do have Matt Moore, and Matt Moore is not good, and Matt Moore will implode. But he threw for four touchdowns on like I don't know twenty tosses this past week, so like he still has he he can still be good. So we got the nine and five Dolphins rolling in to the seven and seven Bills in Buffalo. Now it's in Buffalo. I've not looked at the forecast. This could be a snow game. These are both teams five hundred or higher. That you can see in Miami playoff aspirations, Buffalo just like slightly below for nine bucks. That's crazy to me. I get like the bad teams <laughs> playing, but like Buffalo is supposed to have a very, very good fan base. They they very much like just throwing each other through tables, which is something that I can get on board with. <laughs> yes. And they are finally having a a season where they're not winning like four games. They're seven again, they're seven and seven. They could finish with a record above five hundred, and it's nine dollars. That's I don't know. It kind of it's crazy. I expect that out of Chargers fans, but not you, Buffalo. <laughs> not you. Uh, be better fans. <laughs> be better. The the second one, <laughs> the second thought I have, just man, I've been watching the all twenty two of the game this past weekend, putting together uh, my two articles for this week, and I just got to say, man, the all twenty two camera angle for Soldier Field is like the worst I've seen in the league. It's just <laughs> awful. Like the other ones are all nice and they like seem like they're on top of the stadium and it's a wide shot and you see everything. And Soldier Field, it's like someone holding like like a camcorder from like the lower bowl or something, and so everything's like <laughs> from like the video game kind of side angle, and you can't necessarily see what's going on all the time. Oh, it's just it's just garbage. So like as if you need <laughs> another reason to not like the Bears. My my nerd reason is they're all twenty two can they're all twenty two nerd angle is all wrong. It's just it's it's very upsetting to me. It's very I put it on this past week to write my articles and like legit when like oh come on like just I was angry I was angry at my desk. Just, I, that may say more about me than it does about the camera angle. Um, final final thought and it is about the game this past week. Uh, man. So Rodgers hits that 60-yard bomb to Nelson. Just perfect, man. Rolls to his left, sets up. Nelson hits hits his uh, hits his man with this nice little route, spins him around, no deep safety. Perfect, perfect throw. And then what does Aaron Rodgers do? As he's hobbling down the field to spike the ball, 60 yards down the field for the game-winning field goal, Lane Taylor, for some reason, who was injured the previous play, decides this is the time I'm going to run onto the field to sub in. Rodgers actually sees this while he's running down the field to spike the ball with like 20 seconds left in the game and waves Lane Taylor off. That was, that's oh mind blowing. Like being gosh. able, like seeing that while you're focused on just getting down the field to spike the ball, <laughs> to get the game winning field goal after just hitting a 60 yard pass with no timeouts left. The presence of mind to do that, it's, it's staggering to me. Just, uh, the throw, the throw was incredible. That little move after the fact was just, uh, it, it blew my mind, man. Just, just really next level stuff there. So that was, that was exciting. Uh, so that's it for me. Uh, you can find me at Dusty Evely. I mean, no matter how hard Aaron tries, he'll never be Tom Brady, right? I mean, that's true. Just uh-huh. no matter how hard he tries, the dude is an absolute magician on the field and such. An incredible football mind. Um, that was a very, very, very well final thought there, Dusty. And um, Jordan, thank you. What's your final thought? So last week I, I, I mentioned uh, potential playoff uh, scenarios and tiebreaker 
uh, knowledge in regards to the Packers with a few other teams. It actually turns out the Packers can clinch a playoff spot this week. Ooh. They don't have to wait until the Detroit game. They can actually clinch one this week. Now, that being said, a lot needs to go our way <laughs> in order for us to clinch. But it is fascinating. So, first of all, Packers need to win. Of course. Uh, if Chicago beats Washington and Packers win, Washington is eliminated. If New Orleans beats Tampa Bay, then that means that the best Tampa Bay can be is 9-7. and seven. Now, if the Packers finish tied with Tampa at 9-7 and seven, at the end of the season, I mentioned last week that it actually goes to the fourth tiebreaker in order to find a way <laughs> to, to, uh, to, to break the tie between the two squads. And that fourth tiebreaker is strength of victory. So we look at some of the teams that <laughs> actually come into play here. And what the Packers need is there are, there are actually seven <laughs> games. There are seven <laughs> games that they can look at. If five of those games go their way in regards to the strength of victory tiebreaker, they can win. They can they can clinch a playoff berth this Saturday. So we are fans of the Packers, Chicago, New Orleans, Atlanta, Cleveland. Maybe Cleveland can help the Packers out this week. Nine dollars. Denver, Detroit, Houston, Jacksonville, <laughs> and LA. If we can get five of those seven teams to win, and Packers win, Washington loses and Tampa loses, the Packers are going to the playoffs. So there you go. Preach. Seems, seems like Preach. yes. Lovely. Seems extremely likely. Yeah. I'd be I'm shocked sorry, if guys, but happen. I'm never gonna cheer for the Saints. It's just it's not gonna happen. <laughs> sorry. I'd rather leave it all to week seventeen than cheer for the Saints. Not a true fan. <laughs> not a true fan. Not a true not fan. Not a true fan. I don't even care. Well if you it's guys didn't personal. learn anything if you guys didn't learn anything today, we just learned that Brian has um just a deep hatred for the Saints. No, he brought that up before. I feel like I knew that. I brought that. I think. I think last week I, I explained. Probably it, every so. week. It's probably every. Like week. every. It's been every. It's been every week. I'm sorry. No. It should just be my <laughs> final thought from now on. Yeah. It's just a new reason to hate the Saints this week. Jordan, uh, last time I checked, you were on Twitter. I still am. It's amazing. Uh, you guys can find me at <laughs> amazing, J- unfortunate. You know, whatever. <laughs> you can find me at jgpeck41. All right, and it is now time for my final thought, and I am doing this for you guys, the listeners. Um, You guys probably were listening to this whole podcast being like, wow, how have they not talked about all of these stud players on the Packers getting snubbed from the Pro Bowl? And I will be the one to carry the voice (laughs) of Pack to the Future about this and say a lot there, there are a few players on the Packers that just got absolutely snubbed in making the Pro Bowl this year. I'm going to start off with one of my favorite Packers, Mike Daniels. Um, that dude is just an absolute beast, and he deserves his recognition and his and his day in the hot sun. And um, he, sh- he should be in there. Um, David Bakhtiari is having one heck of a season. He also needs to be in there. And good old number 87, I still think should be in the pro bowl as well. So I think, I think three players really got the snub. Um, and I, I'm sorry. I know you guys are, um, Jordy, Mike and David, I know you guys are listening. And if you want, if you want hugs, I will hug you guys and, and pat you guys' backs and say, you guys are doing a great job. So keep up the good work guys. And you know, you'll be on there next year. Um, other than that, I just want to wish everyone, the happiest of holidays. Um, enjoy some time with your family. Tell them you love them, and uh, just open up some presents. Get very excited. Throw some, throw some wrapping paper at at your at your favorite person to, or least favorite person in the family, and um, <laughs> just know that just know that just know that we all we all um, from Back to the Future writers included are wishing you the happiest of holidays. Go pack, go. I, ha- I have to interrupt your goodbye because I forgot one of my final thoughts. Brock oh. Osweiler was benched. Yeah, he was. <laughs> the Houston Seven. Texans are probably never going to win another football game as long as they are a franchise <laughs> because they benched the legend that is Brock Osweiler. Josh, I should go, bro. Sign off. Gotta let it yeah, go. I should just. I should. All right, guys. That's the episode. See you next week. That's the best. That's the best way to. That's the best way to exit the show. Just Brock Osweiler <laughs> reference, but. No, in all seriousness, everyone at PTTF uh, wishes you a happy holidays. Go Pack Go. Let's keep this winning streak alive, and hopefully um, Jordan's final thought comes true and possibly Packers can to play off for it this week. We'll talk so about it next. We'll talk about it next week. Have a great week. <laughs>